We're talking about Brianna and Josh today. If you've watched season three of Dream Home Makeover, you have seen the update of their entry living and dining space. They lost their son, Connor, at a very young age, and they really just lived life to the fullest during that time that they knew he would be with them. So this home is their forever home because it has those memories of him in the space. And so they really wanted to create an environment that they could feel at peace in and also give them you know, a fresh take on these spaces that they haven't really paid attention to. It's a 1970s home. It has great ceiling height, but the spaces are very, very open concept. This is a theme that you'll see throughout season three. We had a lot of clients with spaces that just kind of flowed one into another, a lot of open concept spaces that we had to work with. And so we were tasked with the challenge of making them feel connected, but also separated at the same time. In the entryway, we replaced their old porcelain tile with the medallion detail in the center with this great tumbled stone herringbone floor. And that gave us a dedicated entryway. We took advantage of the wall where the console goes and we did this antique console and this cute oval mirror and a family photo of Connor so that they could see that when they walk in. All of the spaces ran together, so I didn't feel like it was the right thing to do to go dark on the walls because that would be dark on half of their home. But I did feel like it was important to tie in that depth of color that we have on the dark stain on their existing beams and on their existing floor. So we tied in a lot of antiques to give character and history to this space. You walk in, you turn to your left, and you are greeted with this living room that had a hand-me-down kind of curved sectional with a floral print, I think, on it. It was just floating in the middle of the room. There was no furniture or anything really paired with it. And so we needed to give that room some purpose. They have young kids, and so I wanted to be mindful to pick furniture that didn't have really sharp corners. But also, this is their formal living space, and so I wanted it to feel dressed up as well. We selected these moss green linen curved back chairs. And that way, when you walk into the space, you are greeted with like a round corner that is easy to walk around and a pretty back to the chair. So that is visually appealing. The rug incorporated warm tones, mauve colors, a little bit of a sage green and gray. And we've incorporated that throughout the mix of textiles in the space. The coffee table, I opted for a round coffee table because they have young kids and they mentioned that they love to play on the floor, play on the rug. So we went a little smaller on the coffee table to make room for that, keeping that in mind. And we found this table that had this really heavy marble veining throughout it. That was the thing that was going to dress up the space and add that formality, but then also really function well for them. The baby grand piano. That wasn't going anywhere. That was going to stay right where it was placed. So we kept that there and, and worked around that piece in the space plan. One of my favorite details in this design was the cabinet. I knew that we had designed this piece for McGee & Co and it had these reeded glass front doors, which is a huge trend right now. It's something that's classic, it's been around forever, but we're seeing it trending in a big way. It has a subtle green color. I always say, if you have a, cabinet that's a tall cabinet and you have really tall ceilings, you should still add even more height to it. Don't let it sit alone. So add a vase or a basket or something on top of it. We took advantage of the bay window by adding drapes and a console. I think instead of pushing all of the furniture into a bay window, the trick is to layer in front of it. And by giving that console moment with a little lamp, it kind of helped nestle into the bay window and make sense of it without it feeling awkward. Then in the dining room, we did a long table and suspended a light fixture that stretched along the length of it. I felt like we needed to really elongate that room and that chandelier did that trick for us. Artwork was a huge, a huge discussion because we had a lot of walls to dress. And how do you mix all of the artwork in the space to speak to each other without it feeling cluttered or like they're competing. 
The key to doing that is mixing the mediums. So we have one that feels more like a sketched piece of artwork, one that is a painting. We have some photography. We have some vintage pieces. All of those things work together to complement each other in color palette, but the mediums feel different so that they can live together in the space and not feel repetitive. Another really big key to making this home feel special to Brianna and Josh was family photos. And I love family photos, but I also think that if they are not placed in a thoughtful way, it can feel a little cheesy. So you don't wanna do that massive, massive family photo in a prominent focal point. I say group them together or place them, lean them on shelves, lean them on consoles, put them in groups. You see that we did that in a couple places in their home. One rule I broke in this home. I usually do one rug with a pattern and then I'll do another rug with a neutral texture like a seagrass or a jute. But we brought in something with a neutral texture and I did not like the way it was feeling in the space. And so we took it out and added a plaid. And I think at the end of the day, the reason that that wasn't working was because we could fit so little furniture into this dining space. And I think that because of that, we weren't getting um, as much visual interest as I wanted in the space. And so we picked patterns that work together. I, thought of it in terms of how we pair pillows together. You'll pair like clean lines with a floral. And so with this vintage inspired pattern on the living room rug, it made sense to go with a plaid in the dining room. And at the end of the day, I was really happy with how those work together, but it's not something that I always do. In the end, it all came together. We had a few hiccups, but to me, at the end, it feels just right. And that's what gives you peace when you walk into the door and becomes that calming home that they were looking for. I think that incorporating the antiques helps give it character, even though we brought in everything new into the space. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't checked out this episode on season three of Dream Home Makeover, go check it out.